Today's video will be about the types of river and the discharge of rivers. And happy World Water Day! Types of rivers. There are four types of rivers. With each type of river, I am going to give an example of a river in South Africa. You should know this example, but I am also going to give some extra information about the river, just for interest's sake. You do not need to know this extra information for matric. But please, just know the name of the river, because you might be required to list the river. So a permanent river, also known as a perennial river. It flows all year round because the bed of the river is lower than the surrounding water table. The example is the Vol River. It is a main tributary of the Orange River and it starts near Brayton in Mpumalanga. A periodic river. A periodic river only flows during the rainy season when the water table is higher. So it only flows when the water table is higher than the river bed. But remember, this only occurs during the rainy season. An example is Moda Rafir near Harry Smith. It is a tributary of the Rit River. Episodic River only flows after heavy rain. This is because they are in low rainfall areas where the water table remains low, below the river bed. Now, these rivers can be especially dangerous because for long periods of time, for years, they can be just a dry riverbed and a lot of people think that they are no longer flowing. And that is true because the water table will always remain below the riverbed. But if there is a sudden increase in rainfall, then all that rain is channeled into the river and it can flow for a short period of time. Now, an example of a river is Lanesburg River. Now, the Lanesburg flood in January of 1981 killed at least 100 people. Now, why did this happen? This happened because the Lanesburg River had been dry for many, many years. And suddenly, heavy rainfall caused all this water to be channeled into the Lanes River. And it happened at night, and people weren't aware that this was happening. So it flooded the entire town of Lanesburg. So this just goes to show that no matter how dry a river looks or how long the river has been dry for, a river is still powerful and it should still be treated with respect. So don't go building houses in a dry, dried up river. Exotic rivers. These rivers flow in dry and arid areas and the only reason why these rivers are able to flow in these dry areas is because their tributaries are in areas of high rainfall. So the tributaries receive water and they flow into this river and therefore they can continue keeping this river flowing even though it flows through dry and arid areas. An example is the Orange River. It's the longest river in South Africa, it's 2,200 kilometers long and it starts in the Drakensberg in Lesotho. Now, periodic, episodic and exotic rivers are also known as non-perennial rivers. River discharge, lamina flow. So this river, the bed is smooth and flat. There is very little friction. The river flows smoothly and fast, and it flows in horizontal layers. There is no vertical mixing, and there is very little erosion inside this river. Turbulent flow. The river bed is uneven and rocky. This causes a bubbling, irregular and turbulent flow. So this is when you see rapids in a river, that is turbulent flow. This is this causes erosion and there is lots of vertical mixing. Sediments can be effectively transported inside this river. 